All right, folks, welcome back. This is the Thursday episode of the Assy Defensorship, September 16th, 2021. Just rolling through this year, aren't we? All right, so this is the dollar index daily chart. This is going to be a brief review, but I promised I would go through what I was seeing as the catalysts or potential catalysts for Thursday being the larger range or move of the week. Uh, before we get into that, this is to our general review. Daily chart, you can see we went up into mean threshold of the bearish order block here. So we've consolidated and rallied one more time into a bearish order block mean threshold. And I was mentioning how I wouldn't be surprised if they took this area out and they pumped it one more time on the retail sales number and the speech in the euro. So all of those factors and the late day of the week, uh, Thursday with really nothing going on all week. The market was, was listless. It didn't have a whole lot of movement at all this week. A little bit of animation on Thursday's trading, and we'll take a look at that here. Again, the dashed line is the low that bear shorter block, the level here, light orange, I guess it would be. Uh, that is the mean threshold, so that way you can calibrate and get your bearings on the lower time frames when we drop down because they are not annotated or labeled, let's say, that way. And then the shaded area down here is just this right there. Okay. All right, so here is the hourly chart. Here's that mean threshold, the bearish order block on the daily chart. Premium high, discount low, anchored on this candle's high and this candle's low. Sell side of balance, buy side of efficiency. And this is the bearish order block low on the daily chart. Relative equal highs. We ran up into that. Now, I mentioned that if I was wrong, that they would send it up into this area up in here. And it did take the buy side out. It did take the buy side here. I mentioned that this was too clean. They'll probably want to send it up there. I would have rather seen it obviously go lower. But if it had, it really would have been of no victory, if you will. And this isn't all that bad either because we were looking for a run in here. And if it did go there, we mentioned how it would go up into the premium raise that we're seeing here. Not so much this one. This one is added after the fact. So this, and admittedly, is a hindsight addition to the annotations. But nonetheless, you should have that in your charts for logging purposes. And you can see how we had the buy side liquidity pool here. I mentioned this yesterday and that the market did, in fact, run up into that. Institutional order flow entry drill here. London session runs it up. New York session ramps up into mean threshold bearish order block on the daily chart. Founds the support at that old fair value gap by setting balance outside of efficiency on the daily chart here and just straight off to the races. No Judas swing, just right on up. Your dollar daily chart. Okay, nice big candle here, smashing deeper into the order block here. Now, if we take out Thursday's low, if we take that out and expand, we could be seeing it trade down into this area here. And if it does that, then think about those relative equal lows that are just to the left. And I probably should have had this scrunched up a little bit more so you could see it. But the relative equal lows on the daily chart that did not get tagged on the Forex market, but did get swept on the futures market. I mentioned this uh, like last week, I think it was. If not, it was a week before. Somewhere in there. I don't know exactly where it was, but I know I did cover it. And we smashed down on euro dollar with the elevation on the dollar index. I'm not so sure still, you know, what we're going to see from here. Okay, we had a heavy news driver come into the marketplace this week on a lackluster economic calendar. So this was the biggest day that had the potential fireworks to create a lot of momentum and movement. Now, it wasn't a lot of movement, admittedly, but it's 
nice to see at least a directional play. Whether we're right or wrong, it's of no consequence because we're looking for momentum or looking for movement. I mentioned this on my YouTube commentary post this morning. I made a comment or a little rant, if you will, about daily bias. And I know why people voted for daily bias because they're all struggling to find a daily bias in Forex right now. So in my attempt to try to help these individuals not kill themselves in the marketplace, they don't have the benefit of me telling them like I'm telling you and coaching you, justifying why it is difficult even for me at the moment because the markets are just simply range bound. They're not doing a whole lot and you have to wait for the market to show some willingness. And I'm not going to repeat all this because I did this yesterday and earlier in the week. But everybody is having a difficult time trying to forecast a continuous on-side, in other words, being correct on your analysis, daily bias. Because the market is just banging around in a large consolidation. So that should make you feel a little bit better knowing that you're here, hearing the whys in the navigation, if you will. And we'll get through this, and when we do, we'll be back into calling moves again. Right now, we're just going to have to endure it. Your dollar hourly chart. I mentioned that we were looking at a potential market maker sell model in here. And we're going to see how it ran back up into an old imbalance right in here, then tanked. So I mentioned there was sell-side liquidity below here. And then now, yesterday's recording, take your attention to this area. Okay, so in other words, we were here. I said... Take your attention to there. That's where it's most likely going to go down to because this was a market maker sell model. And then look what they did. They ran it one more time right back up into an area we'll see on the 15 minute time frame. And then ran it way beyond what I was looking for. I was just looking for it to trade in the here and maybe get something that would give us a setup for Friday. But it was just a straight run into that, just cascading right from Jump Street on midnight. No Judas swing, just completely ran right through it like a hot knife through butter and attacked the sell side liquidity resting below this low here. So that's what we have in play for the hourly chart. Let's go into the 15 minute time frame. Sell side imbalance, buy side inefficiency in here. Look at the bodies of the candles in here, not the wicks. Look at the storyline between all the bodies, the opens and closes. What's it respecting? That premium high of this Sell side balance, buy side efficiency. Over here, what are the bodies respecting? The premium high of the sell side balance, buy side efficiency. This is distortion by time. So all of this is marking the market and just doing nothing. That's the reason why all these individual candles in here will get you in trouble if you're trying to look for some kind of rhyme or reason. This is just a quiet period in the marketplace where we use for standard deviations and things of that nature, but nothing for like timing purposes or high probability entries on an individual candle basis. In this period of the day, you're going to have to refer to either liquidity pools or the imbalances and cutting through candles because we're not supply and demand. The algorithm stayed in here allowing interbank traders to accumulate more shorts and they went down to the sell-side liquidity we were talking about, or I was mentioning yesterday, which takes us to the 118 big figure. And when we go through a big figure, what do you have in your notes in response to this phenomenon? If we're going to go down through or up through a big figure, big figure is a zero, zero level, okay? If we trade through that, what is the likelihood that it could move? And in terms of pips, what's the magnitude? It can go as many as 40 pips. Well, 40 pips would take us down here to 117.60. And we almost went down 50 pips, just fell short of it here. So that, to me, is a lot of energy to get through that 118 big figure. Now, there is a small little imbalance in here. And there is a small one right in here. I'll leave that for you to annotate on your own charts. So if we get a little bit of a pump up into there, that might be an upside objective. And up in here, that might be a reasonable objective to retrace to. If we get above this and then find some support, 
I would like that because this is the original consolidation, sells off, distribution, potential smart money reversal, low risk buy. And if we rally up and come back down in, that could set us a stage for running through here, maybe over here again. And this would be an area at some point on Friday and or Monday, assuming that we get up here. It may not even get up there. Okay, but classic support and resistance fans would look at this as support broken. They're going to want to sell it there. I'd like to see it trade above it, come back down in, find some support, and rally. Okay, kind of like what I showed you earlier in the week, and it delivered like gangbusters on cable. So looking at this, you know, it, it had some signatures, but it didn't really give you any real opportunity in here. It just smashed down. It just ran really quick for the liquidity down here and that's going to be a move that i would have missed admittedly i'm not going to make any bones about it i mean yes there's institutional order flow entry drill technique that could be applied here but i would have rather seen some kind of a judas you know get pumped up into that direction and then look for a run below these lows that's what i would have favored but as you can see here it wasn't doing it finally on bridge pound daily chart little down day in here rejection block here which is not noted but have that on your charts you can have that for your journaling but just consolidation okay it hasn't done much at all just staying in this small trading range in here all right pound dollar on the hourly chart you can see we had this was a nice little due to swing in here ran back up into the last two up close candles bearish order block optimal trade entry sells off relative equal lows fair value gap in the form of buy side and balance sell side and efficiency and all of this low here what's it anchored to these down close candles here one two three opening of that candle to the wick that's your area for downside discount and it trades down here look at the buys respecting the opening price of that right there see the logic in that it's beautiful isn't it one two three that's one consecutive bullish order block hits it here digs into it a little bit and that's fine but look at the underlying narrative at work here bodies showing the respect of that specific price level not a zone okay not some kind of a candlestick pattern formation nothing harmonic <laughs> just standard classic little ICT order block, hammers it there, and rebalances all of this sell side and bounce buy side and efficiency. So we'll see what we get in response to this little retracement here. Does it trade one more time to dig down below these lows in here? Because we do have a potential low resistance liquidity run signature. We have the higher low to the right of the lower low. And if we do sell off, I'd be looking for a 137.30 to 137.20 institutional. And if it rallies back above this short term high, then we may need to get back into this area here because we do have relative equal highs here. Buy sell liquidity resting above that 10, 15, 20 pips above puts us in this area here with the breaker. So we might need to go back up into that, upset this. That's a rare occurrence. Okay, this is for your notes. We had the breaker here one two times and it breaks down for it to come back up i don't personally like that as a trade for selling short but it's a rare occurrence for it to do that and then come back down that would basically signify extreme manual override or manipulation from a human perspective in other words they're putting someone at work in there to reprice above here back into the breaker then go down again that that is so unlikely, but it's happened a few times in the past. I've noticed it a very few amount of times over the last almost 30 years. That is something I would not look for. I would feel more comfortable thinking that if it's going to go up there, not to just take these out, it come back down and then look for something bullish to rally higher. That breaker doesn't need to be traded to that many times. Usually you don't get that. Okay, so... Just think of if we go back above here, it's going to come back down likely to find something that would be bullish. Otherwise, the cable looks heavy and we may want to run below here, 
after rebalancing like we have here. All right, and on the 50-minute time frame, right in here, you can see we have a fair value gap in the form of a sell side of balance, buy side of efficiency. Overshoots it a little bit in here, but we're working inside that range now. And if we just completely roll over, look for an expansion below this collection of lows in the form of 10, 20, maybe 25 pips below. And that would be uh, a weekly range projection for cable. Uh, I'm not that overzealous about it. I wouldn't be that excited about doing it. I'm not enticing you, hopefully, because uh, I'm not trying to inspire you to take a trade. But for analysis sake only, this would be a reasonable expectation for it to, to move lower and work towards a deeper run on sell side liquidity. All right, I promised you I would talk about why I was forecasting at the beginning of the week, Thursday, having the better move of the week, okay, where the where the market would most likely try to do the majority of its move and have a cleaner uh, run in price. And we obviously had that, but we didn't get any real Judas swing or uh, multiple areas to get in sync with, at least from a 15-minute time period. So this is the economic calendar if you're using Forex Factory. And the settings are showing no low impact or yellow. And only showing euro, dollar, and pound. So I'm not showing Australian. I'm not showing Canadian. I'm not showing Japanese yen, you know, New Zealand. None of those. So none of those pairs are being reflected or currencies being reflected in the economic calendar when I do it. So if you look at what was shown here, and this is kind of like why I didn't show you the economic calendar at the beginning of the week. Okay, but I did tell you where my focus was on Thursday, expecting that to be the day where it has the more fire, most fireworks. That was the words I gave you. The economic calendar, I can't change. So you know, and I don't waste my time and your time by showing you an economic calendar anymore in the beginning of the videos because it just became too much of an extra thing. It's not necessary. You know how to go and find the economic calendar yourself. And besides, you may be following other pairs outside of Euro and Cable in addition to, because you're more advanced now, because that's a charter member, you have pairs that you'd like and you've developed an affinity for that may not always be found in Euro and Cable. But I use Euro and Cable to build a foundation because you only need these two pairs. You only need just one of them. But you only need one of them or both of those to carve out a career. But let's take a look at the economic calendar. On Monday, the 13th of September, 2021, there's an absence of any high impact or medium impact news drivers. So it's a void there of any real stimulation by way of the economic calendar. On Tuesday, we had high impact CPI numbers for the dollar index at 830. Then Wednesday, 2 a.m. pound CPI number, 830 a.m. Empire State Manufacturing Index, which is a medium impact for dollar and 915 industrial production medium impact for dollar, and 10.30 a.m. crude oil inventories, which is not a whole lot of energy behind that one unless it's a market that's poised to move big time in crude oil, which we don't look at too much, kind of like gold. It's, it has to be, it's an event market, okay? And what I mean by that is it needs to have some kind of special circumstance around it for me to be interested in it, okay? Because um, gold is highly manipulated and so is Oil. Oil is highly manipulated. You can see last year where it literally went down below zero. <laughs> it was negative 40 plus bucks the, a barrel. So they were paying people to come pick up their oil. So from Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday, there isn't a whole lot going on for euro. And then all of a sudden on Thursday, see what happens here? We have 8 a.m. euro, medium impact, ECB president speaking. So that's the first mention of Euro all week. That was my first tip off. So there's nothing being utilized as a smoke screen or gasoline for a fire for Euro until Thursday. Big, big, big light bulb moment for you, okay? 8.30 a.m., high impact dollar, core retail sales, and medium impact Philly Fed manufacturing index, and then unemployment claims. Now, unemployment claims is going to be fudged. That number is being so manipulated right now for the purposes of giving the right kind of hope or expectation. That number is so fake. Okay, It's so false right now. It's ridiculous. But 
you know, I'm not going to sit here and argue it because I don't have a way of proving it beyond a shadow of a doubt. I just don't trust this number. Okay, because there's so many people screwed up with their jobs right now, unemployment, not being able to get unemployment. It's just they, they don't have an accurate number that's going to be shared to the public. They're not going to do that. So, and plus there's millions of jobs that are available. Now, not all of them are paying a living wage, obviously, but apparently you, know, you can start getting almost $20 an hour doing jobs that would have otherwise been less than $12 an hour just 18 months ago or 12 months ago. And they still can't find employees. Nobody wants to work. So I gotta dial myself in because I'm gonna turn this short video into a long rant. <laughs> so looking at just Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday, there's a clear, obvious cue on that Thursday with Euro. That's the only day that Euro had a calendar event listed. And it's just a speech. So when I seen that, over the weekend, uh, and when I talked to you on Monday, reminded you that there was the likelihood that Thursday would be the day where the majority of the fireworks, okay, those were my terms and my, my descriptive uh, adjectives, about that being the bigger move or the cleaner move of the week. Now, because Euro is mentioned the first time on Thursday, how does that help us? Because if you look at Friday, it's medium impact GBP at London session. Retail sales, that should give some volatility. And then 10 a.m., medium impact, preliminary consumer sentiment. That's for dollar. So if we look at the absence of euro every other day except for Thursday, that sets the stage for a consolidation week, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and then Wednesday late or Wednesday closing into Thursday start, we can get this big move that would take place that would be the, the majority of the weekly range being encapsulated in the run in Thursday's price action. So what does that look like? Well, for those individuals that have made it to month seven, this slide is part of your training. This is consolidation midweek decline. So what we have here is Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, consolidation, okay? As a new developing student, you may not see this as consolidation. You might see it as an optimal trade entry sell, or you may see it as a return back to a bearish breaker on Wednesday into Thursday and the move going lower. That's fine. However you interpret this weekly profile, run with that. Okay, I'm not trying to distort what you've already grown accustomed to if you've been familiar with my weekly templates. This is just one weekly template. Now, I give you some of the things over here that sets up the logic behind it, but I basically outlined already before changing to this slide in the video why I was looking at Thursday showing the biggest run. Because if you look at the consolidation here, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and then the range expansion is the majority shown on Thursday and a little bit of follow through into Friday. That's classic consolidation midweek decline as I define it as inner circle trader. So what you saw in the Euro is just that. You have consolidation. Somewhere in Wednesday, we have the beginning of the move, and then the ma majority of the weekly range is shown on the move going into Thursday. And then we'll probably go below this low a little bit and make a lower low on Friday. It's not necessary because Friday, if it doesn't go lower than Thursday's low, it'll just show you that weekly range was formed with the majority of the move midweek going into Thursday. So... Hopefully you can see by using the things I taught you with the economic calendar, which is basic, basic ICT stuff, looking for clues, little signatures that they're going to manipulate a, a market, particularly Euro. They're holding Euro in consolidation all week until we get to the midweek ahead of or during the release of that speech and the retail sales number 
So ahead of that number, ahead of all those jawbones that would have been done, and I don't even know what that speech even said, or even if the speech even took place, because sometimes on their calendar they'll have a speech that either gets canceled or postponed or they change the time or whatever. I just knew at the beginning of the week that economic calendar showed what we have here and what I showed you in this presentation tonight. You were counseled on Monday to look at the economic calendar, and you should be doing it anyway on the weekends before the week even starts. But the midweek going into Thursday, the lion's portion of the move, you see it here. So it's completely taken out of what I teach. And if you look at the slide, look at it. This is 2017. Okay, and I think it would be what? March? January is month five. February is month. Yeah, so it's it's definitely month seven in March of 2017 is when I made this available to the students in the mentorship. Now, prior to this month, nobody except for people that work with me one on one on a mentoring basis learned this. No, no one was taught this in YouTube. No one was taught this on Baby Pips. No one, no one even knows about it until I mentioned it. Okay, that that's the, you know, the bones of it all. So, understanding how the algorithm will deliver price when it's a better market environment. Now, imagine we didn't have all this hoopla going on with the with the pandemic and everybody's fighting with one another you're vaccinated i'm not vaccinated you know you're the you're the plague you're the reason why my vaccination doesn't work because you didn't get a vaccination you see the logic behind that it's none it's absent so but they're creating this great divide and it's also it's a global thing it's not just a u.s thing it's not just in your country so what that has caused and i promise i'm going to make this a very short little injection of my personal opinion and rant it's caused the large fund traders that have lots of money that go into these marketplaces, they're scratching their head. They don't know where to put their money. And I'm going to say that again. Large funds have no idea where to put their money. Why? Because nobody knows what the hell's going on. And this is the reason why I'm telling you, and I've had some people that literally quit and then sent me an email saying, you know, uh, I expected you to be able to do better than this. Well, listen, folks, they're not going to have the benefit of knowing what I'm about to tell you because they've already left. But no one has a understanding where a safe haven is right now. Wherever the safe haven is, is going to cause an imbalance. Where monies are flowing into that, there's going to be a flow outward from another market. So if no one has a clear understanding because of the absolute backwardization of normalcy globally right now, there is no one on this planet, and ICT included, <laughs> that knows where the money could be placed safely and weather this personal storm that each of us are enduring. See, you're looking at an account with whatever you have in it. Whatever you're willing to risk, that is peanuts. Even my wealth is peanuts compared to the amount of money that gets placed in these markets on a large fund collective basis. That liquidity gets paired with the central bank. They're the seller of the, the risk. Okay, they, they, they sell that risk to these large funds, or they assume the risk based on the pairing of the Forex pair, and they will be counterparty, basically. So understanding the macro perspective, which is why I've been teaching you all to respect this elevated risk. You're expecting you, someone that's just simply joined some person out there you don't really know me you know you don't really know me you hear my voice you've grown accustomed to hearing me talk to you and i've had some good advice in the past but you don't really know me but you're assuming that i'm going to be the one guy that's going to have everything understood 
in this environment. Now, I'm flattered that some of you, not all of you, some of you think that highly of me. But I have done everything I can do, humanly possible, in the last 15 to 16 months to tell you that I am gravely concerned for the level of risk that is in these markets right now. And you have watched the daily ranges, the weekly ranges, slowly but surely contract because that same sentiment is being held and reflected now in the speculation on a large fund basis. Without the large funds, you cannot see sustained price moves, period. That's the, the, the basis of why these markets are going to have sustained price runs and position trading or swing trading opportunities. If you don't have the large funds assuming risk, you're going to have market contraction. And then you have to wait for some kind of outward stimulus, which is what I mentioned yesterday. You have to have that, and that can only be instigated by the central banks because they own everything. They're in control of the stock market. They're in control of interest rates. They're in control of money flow. They're in control of economies. They are in control of every single thing. And right now, they're allowing everything to contract because they want submission. They don't want anybody seeing lots of opportunity. And that's why I'm telling you, crypto will fall victim to this. Because they're in that now. They know everybody thinks that's the last bastion now. It's not. It's just the next victim. So, what am I saying here tonight? I'm saying that those of you that are here still, you're smart. You see and respect the level of, well, transparency I'm giving you. Because I could sit here and pretend, in hindsight... All kinds of things and dazzle you and lean on your trust of what I've been able to do in the past and pretend like I knew all this stuff was going to happen week after week. Notice I'm not doing that. I am not a crook. I'm not a scam artist. I'm not pretending anything. When I know something, I tell you. And when I don't know something, I'm also telling you that as well. Because I want you to be taught correctly and I want you to understand these environments that are high risk that offer up the opportunity for black swan events. And man, we are really, really like primed for that. Now I thought about this the other day and I promise this is the closing of the video. I do believe there's going to be another event in addition to, because this whole COVID stuff and the Delta and the shutting down, like what they're doing in Australia. Listen, folks, if you have not been paying attention to what's going on in Australia, you need to start. You really need to start because that is absolutely new world order, globalist takeover, and mark of the beast, whether you like to hear that kind of stuff or not, that's what's rolling out down there. And that's the agenda they want to do everywhere. In America, we have guns. And for that to be rolled out with any measure of success, you can bet they're going to go after firearms. And what's crazy is there's a lot of boating incidents where people take their guns out there and they just fall over off the side of the boat and they don't have those guns anymore. And it's probably going to be a reoccurring theme. You know, something happens and people will start losing their firearms because the government's going to be coming for them. So the idea of thinking that I'm going to be this Messiah, okay, that some of you literally look up to me like I'm some transcendent being. <laughs> I'm an average Joe. I've been blessed. But I have limits. And sometimes I'm going to see these limits 
hit a brick wall. And I've had it happen on short periods of time over the last 30 years or so. But right now, it's everywhere. It's everywhere. So only a neophyte, only someone with unreasonable expectations would be upset. And I don't feel bad for these folks. If they left, whatever. God bless you. I hope you find your, your path and whatever you're doing. But I'm honest. I'm telling you why that the markets are not providing you high probability, high precision. They're not there because the central banks are squeezing everything. They're contracting the markets. The markets cannot stay in a state of contraction in perpetuity. There's going to be some, something's going to snap. Okay, it may be a war event, which is what I think is going to happen. Okay, um, I think it has to do with Taiwan. I think China is going to try its move, and then the theater starts. Okay, and then we'll have all kinds of you know ripples go through the marketplace as a result of that. It may be something else that I don't see coming, but the false flag event, okay, or black swan event is this whole global takeover. That's what's, that's what's, that's it. But they're doing all these things like leaving billions of dollars of weapons over there for Afghanistan because Obama okayed it. And that's probably going to piss a lot of you guys off in here that are Democrats and love him. But that's who's pulling the strings right now. He's paid Iran in the past. He released all kinds of Taliban, and now they're over there in high seats. So you may not know that if you ain't looking for the information, but it's out there. And then I'm not talking about some conspiracy whack job stuff. Okay, it's fact. These things, you can see them. Like, they're there, Okay. And all of these things have large fund managers questioning where they should assume risk. They don't know. Because right now, as I mentioned in my post on my YouTube channel, right now, we are in a condition in the, in the marketplace that we have never, ever been in. We have never been right where we are right now where no one absolutely knows what's going to happen. No one knows what to expect and no one's willing to put their ass on the line because there's billions and billions, and I'm talking hundreds of billions of dollars at risk in some of these managers' hands. So I find it a little offensive for someone to come in here Right off the street, just finding me on YouTube. And I'm talking specifically about the 2021 group that just came in. Because a lot of you have never even taken a trade. And you come in here and you think you're going to win like right away. You think like this is a video game. You're going to come in and sit down and learn a couple moves and trick moves and some, some cheat codes. <laughs> and then the money's just going to come in your, in your lap. And you're going to own the world like Al Pacino and uh, Scarface. Well, now you're getting to see what it's like. When reality slaps you in the, in the gills, this is it. Sometimes you have to say, there's nothing for me to do right now. And that's the safe bet. And everybody else out there that's pretending to be something they're not, they're either number one, getting very, very lucky. And I'm a poster child for that. For nine months, I got real, real lucky in the 90s. And then I couldn't do anything. Everything was a losing trade. In this environment right now, skill will save you money. Making money consistently, unless you are a one minute, five minute chart trader and you're in there just taking your 10, 15 pips and getting done and getting out and being done. That's where the sweet spot in this market is right now. That's it. Ultra, ultra scalping. And not even every single day. There's a 
a state of nimbleness that you have to have. And if you're 2021 group, you don't have that. Sorry, you don't have it. So I want to commend you if you're still here listening to this through the mentorship and you have submitted to this because you have the wherewithal that's required to be successful in this industry. People that see a little bit of loss of traction by me or an analysis in this environment and they say, okay, this isn't for me or isn't he isn't as good or this isn't as good as a method as I thought it was. You're fo they're fooling themselves. Like they're literally fooling themselves because they come in with neophyte expectations and they go, well, you know, I, fi I figured it out. You know, there's nothing to see here now. So we're done. That's not true. There's lots of opportunities. Listen, the stock market has index futures and the commodity markets. I already told you for 2022, that market is being primed for ridiculous runs, but they can't happen right away. There's a growing plantation management of the crop and failure of the crop. Those types of things, they take time. Forex. That's like the flagship that brought you here, but that market isn't hot right now because of the economies globally being strangled. If you live in California in ports or have access to driving to the ports and you're a charter member, I would greatly appreciate, and I'm sure the community would love to see this as well. If you could go to the coast of California, where a port, where they you know, bring in cargo ships and unload them and load them up or whatever, take a picture of all the cargo ships that are sitting out off the coast that are not allowed to come in to unload. Think about it. That's happening everywhere. Not just in America. It's happening everywhere. They're strangling, well, who's they? The central banks. Those families that I told you that run everything, okay, and the one above all of them, they're the ones doing all this. And their agenda is to crash everything and basically put something in your body that you shouldn't want. So there's physicians in this mentorship. There's doctors and nurses in this mentorship. And I had a few over the last year or so reach out and tell me, you know, COVID is a real so-and-so. You know, it's it's terrible. It's real. It's this, it's that. Yeah, people get sick. People are really getting sick. But there's also doctors and nurses in here that will tell you if they're honest. And I'm hoping that some of them are when they become charter members. That they're being told to do things in these hospitals that shouldn't be done. The treatment isn't what should be done. So I'm not going to say any more than that, but I just know that I would never talk about these things in public. I would never, ever, ever do it because I don't want to put a bullseye on me and people that are doing things like this, Don't have your best interest in mind. So it should not be surprising to you to see the temporary difficulty with Forex. What do you think is going to happen if civil war breaks out, not just in one country, but multiple countries? People are uprising right now. And yes, the video is going longer, but I got to get it off my chest. The, the news in America doesn't show you how the people in Brazil are literally like an ocean of people out there. And their president or leader came out and said, you know, to hell with you. We're not doing your vaccinations, big pharma. You're trying to get rich and you know, you're hurting people and there's no recourse legally for any victim of these shots. 
So we're not going to do it. And then their grid starts going down. So I'm not a clairvoyant. I'm not a psychic. But it's strange how some of these world leaders get taken out of office or they strangely die. And this guy literally just painted a bullseye on his forehead and said, kill me. Because <laughs> he basically said, F you. I'm not doing that. And the countrymen of Brazil are cheering him on. Like, yeah, yeah, great, great. But this mechanism is going to put the Qaddafi syndrome on him. That's, how, that's what I see. Nobody that has the opinion of going against this stuff either holds that opinion or lives. Just look around. The information is out there if you look for it. It's funny how everybody was saying, no, we're not going to do these mandated vaccinations. Just, what, less than 60 days ago? Now everybody's saying, we have to do it. We have to. It just has to happen. No, it doesn't. Because it ain't happening here. So, just a little bit of a shot of hard truth for you. Okay? These markets are literally being manipulated to the degree where it's causing stagnation and compression. And something will happen. These current trends globally cannot continue without a major kickback. And it's happening. Everybody in these countries are rising up and they're going out in the street. Now, that doesn't do anything. But what's going to happen is the boots are going to start pressing deeper and harder on their necks. And then you're going to start seeing, you know what? You're already trying to kill me in slow motion, so I'm just going to take the risk and do what I got to do. But not just one person. It's going to be groups of people. And if these folks in waves that they're coming out into the streets, France, Germany, Germany's being brutal. Like they're smashing them. Like I have a collection of people in this mentorship everywhere. I would love for you all to share what's going on that you see firsthand in your own country. Not only would I love to know it myself personally, but you all here would get a better perspective, especially of those of you like me in the States. See, you're being protected. Your perception of what's going on is so heavily slanted. It's all about everybody not wanting to get the vaccination. If the vaccination is so damn well safe and good and effective, why would it matter an unvaccinated person chooses not to take the vaccination? Where's the logic in there? There is none. It's an agenda of some other kind. So they're rolling out this whole thing that, you know, you're going to get stuck with this stuff or you can't be part of the new economy. And they're literally coming out in Australia saying what it is, new world order. What does that mean to you? Because it means something entirely different to me, I'm sure. And that's going to present opportunities in real markets like food. Food, I'm telling you folks, is going to be weaponized. Weaponized. You will not be able to get it. They're already taking you out of the restaurants and cafes. Unless you have this certificate saying you got poisoned. And I know I probably shouldn't talk like that because I know some of you in here probably have been vaccinated. And you probably don't like me saying that. But it is what it is. I have people that I've known since childhood they are not here breathing and living among us anymore after they took one or two doses of that crap sorry I just don't care that if you disagree with me in that regard I personally think that everyone in here that has taken that jab should go get a D-dimer test and see if you're not getting microscopic blood clots forming in your bloodstream. 
I'm not trying to invoke any kind of anxiety on any of you. Just something to consider. Ask your personal physician to do it. Don't be surprised to say, no, they're not going to do it. But we're past getting sick and you have to have this stuff. There's something else going on. And my worst fears about this whole thing when it first started, which is why I said if it goes past 14 days, you know, shut everything down, shutting everything down for 14 days to slow the curve and stop the spread. I'm um, all for that. But if we went past that, this is going to be used, well, for what we're seeing now. And... Maybe, just maybe, you might want to consider where you are in this world on a spiritual level. Not preaching. I'm just saying you might want to take some stock into how you've lived and how you're going to live the rest of your days here. I know it's got me thinking it, and just it's it's nuts to see what's really going on, and how our media is so slanted to hide all that stuff. And Telegram is probably going to be shut down, and as a whole, like. Platforms will not allow it, like they did uh, Parler. They they shut it down. I'm in some channels that Google will not allow the videos to be seen. Now think about that. Why wouldn't they want a particular video seen? Hmm. Some videos. I've seen, not knowing what they were until they started playing, watching some horrible things happening to other people, you know, being murdered or shot or whatever. And I don't look for those types of things, folks. That's not what I'm doing. But why would Google allow those types of videos, but not certain videos, which I don't know what they are. I have no idea what it is. But some of the captions will say things like, you know, this is proof that, you know, they're not going to let the lockdowns subside. And you can't watch the video. So, I know these types of videos may scare some of you. Because in the past, some of you have said, look, you know, this is scaring me. You know, what are you, what are you holding back? I'm not holding back anything. I'm talking to you, and I'm telling you what I'm thinking. I'm telling you how I'm feeling about certain things, and I will never talk like this, not on SoundCloud, not on Twitter, not on Telegram. I'm not going to do it. They already know me, <laughs> okay? And I don't need any more trouble. So, when I say get your house in order, it goes well beyond just getting food, water, and medicines, and things like that. You know, you just got to make yourself right. And prepare your mind for some really hard, hard times. Really hard times. That brings opportunity now, but that opportunity is going to come with a great deal of price tag it's going to come with are you going to be able to engage in fear most of you are going to get scared when you see these markets moving the way they'll do probably next year if not before we get that I might not be in a position to be able to have the confidence to step in some of these moves that I may see or anticipate coming in 2022 let's be real Okay, I might see something that says, you know, what the hell? Where did that come from? 
and it might cause me to sit on my hands and I might miss a, a large portion of an, a, a big move or an entry point that is ideal that would otherwise be, yeah, this is where I'm at. I'm in there. I've been wrestling with that over the past few months. I'm trying to prepare myself. So when I'm talking to you, I'm not trying to invoke fear. Okay? If, if I was a diving instructor, like scuba diving, when you go to learn how to scuba dive, yeah, it's exciting. You, you want to learn how to go down there and you do want to do it safely. But when they start talking about the things that can go wrong, you, know, you have a choice. Either you can listen to those things and be scared out of the whole idea and miss the joy of doing it or the experiences of doing you know, scuba diving. Or you can say, you know what, I'm learning how to manage my fears and emotions if these things present themselves while I'm down there. Because while you're down there, if you're down there deep enough, you just can't quickly swim to the top. It doesn't work like that. So you have to be able to control yourself and the fear that would be instigated because of circumstances down there. So we're going into deep waters, folks. And I'm going to be honest with you. Nobody swam in these waters before. So it is imperative. It is absolutely sane. It is the highest form of management of self and wealth to respect the level of risk that is in this world, markets, everything. Nothing surprises me at this moment now. I'm expecting crazy science fiction stuff at any moment <laughs> because we're seeing it now. So I commend you because you're seeing the importance of knowing how to protect your wealth, your mental capital, because even if you don't have a lot of money, if you become so paranoid you can't take a trade at all. That's just as bad as not knowing how to trade. It's actually worse because it's torturous. I'm not trying to promote analysis paralysis. So there's this balancing act I'm trying to perform here when I'm speaking to you. Yes, there's things you're seeing that still work. Yes, you're seeing also I'm not as dialed in. Now, some of you might make the argument, well, you're, you're getting all wrapped up into this. No, I'm not getting wrapped up in any of this, okay? I'm managing my intake of things, but I'm also leaning heaviest on my experience and what I know. Because if I didn't do that, I'd be all over the place. And I wouldn't even have anything that would resemble understanding. So... I'm hoping that over the coming months, as we transition into 2022, that you will be best prepared for what we see coming in 2022. While I expect and am forecasting wild price action moves in the commodity markets, it may not be limited to those markets. It may be everywhere. And it may be something that is so over the top in terms of magnitude, velocity, speed. Like I'm open to that. I'm preparing myself for that. But I'm trying to remind myself in my journal in a quiet manner to try not to do more than is necessary in both teaching and in my own trading. Because I know how I would want to take on big moves next year. I, I know in my mind I have skills that can 
really put me in a, a league that's unbelievable in terms of wealth. I can do those things. But I also know <laughs> that with everything that's going on, there could be roadblocks placed right in front of me, personally. So I'm trying not to draw any more attention to myself. And also balance the learning curve for all of you. And also, first and foremost, protect you. Because you don't, have, you don't know how easy it is for you to hurt yourself in this environment. You have no idea. You could find yourself in a position that gap so far away from where you got in at and your stop loss wasn't respected and now you owe your broker money you don't even have. That's what I'm trying to protect you from. Now there's no other way of saying it. It's, it's that blunt. If you do something wrong in this environment, in any of these markets, any of them, crypto, forex, Futures, index, commodities, stocks, all of them can have a gap event that is so horrendous, you're done. And now you are in bankruptcy. That's what I'm trying to convey to you. But if I say it like that, that's scary. And some of you are probably now scared to the point where I don't want to trade. And that's not what I want you to think. I want you to think, I better know what I'm doing before I ever consider entering in this environment. And my risk needs to be minuscule right now. You want lots of money because many of you are thinking, if I had lots of money, all these things that's going on right now wouldn't affect me. I'm going to tell you I have lots of money. And if it wasn't for my faith in the Lord and his provision, I would be freaking out right now. And that's the God's honest truth. Because what is going on money doesn't protect you from all they got to do we don't want to do business with you mr ict paypal no longer does business my banking accounts they close the accounts where do i put the money where do i put this kind of money I don't know. Think. Where would you put it? I can't put it on a mattress. <laughs> I can't go pick it up from a bank. It's starting to hit you now, isn't it? If you're not playing ball, wealth isn't going to help anyone. So you have to understand this urgency of understanding that risk is so high right now. You need to respect it. And that means being very careful, very, very careful and patient. And it's the best thing in the world that the impatient folks quit and that they are no longer here because they probably would have done more harm to themselves learning something new and thinking they see it right now because they want to get out of their job or they want to make a lot of money right now because they think that's the answer. And it's not the answer. Your goal should be right now learning how to do this safely, consistently, knowing when not to do it so you can not hurt yourself. 
knowing and learning where you're going to do it wrong, knowing that first, because preservation of capital is the number one rule in speculation, period. Everything else after that is secondary. You have to be able to keep what you have. If you can't keep what you have, you will never be here long enough to make enough to change your lifestyle. The changing of the lifestyle needs to be put on the back burner right now and just think, how can I make my ends meet? Because for a lot of you, your ends probably won't be meeting in 2022. Your job, if you choose to make a decision like I have, to say, no, I'm not going to do this. I'm not going to comply with that. That may be detrimental to you keeping your college career going, your job, or you know, wherever, whatever life takes you. And I'm not here to tell you to take this vaccination or not take this vaccination. But I am honest and I am transparent that I will not do it. Period. So, that is the hard line version of why I'm telling you you need to be careful right now and try not to feel like you're trying to get rich trading because we're not in that right now. We're not in an environment where it's going to just run, 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 run and it's going to be easy for you to get in and out and navigate. It's hard, folks. This right now is very, very hard. And I want you to know that it could potentially get even harder. And do you have the wherewithal to say, you know what? I'm sitting still and I'm going to let this adverse risk environment work itself out and still learn and grow in my understanding in safety. And then when these markets start moving, whether by hook or by crook, by something good or bad, but generally it's probably going to be a bad event, something that's going to take place, and it's going to cause all kinds of gyrations in the market release. Then you'll know when it's okay to get in the market. But right now, <laughs> it's like jogging with a glass of nitroglycerin in your hand. Just the right amount of poor footing, and you go down and it's over. This is not that environment. This is that environment that I didn't see that coming. I'm done. It'll demoralize you more than losing in another environment where it'd be easy to go get another job or work towards building up that money, the capital again, and, and go back at it once more. You don't want to have that right now. Mental illness is at the highest point right now than it's ever been. People are freaking out. They're scared. They have no idea what they're doing. I have literally thousands of people emailing me in the ICT mentorship inquiries email. Like there's so many emails in that and they're all let me in. I want to join. Please open up. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not doing it folks. Okay. But that's, what everybody out there is thinking, they, they, they need to learn how to do this because now where they're at isn't solving it. And you're here, and I'm telling you the advice that they're all screaming and begging for. And I did it openly on YouTube, letting them know there are times like we have right now that you need to sit still. And I'm sure, I haven't looked, but I'm sure I probably got an email or, or will likely get an email from someone that's all bent up saying, why did you say that on a community tab when I'm in the mentorship and you told us that too? You're giving away mentorship. No, I'm giving away my heart. There's a lot of good meaning individuals out there that just didn't have the opportunity because they didn't know about me doing the mentorship and they weren't able to get in here or they just can't afford it. It's not their fault. But the teacher in me doesn't want to see anyone get hurt. And there's a lot of people out there pretending to know how to do this stuff. Out there getting people in trouble. And 
where we're at right now, if someone does not tell them, it could potentially ruin themselves. And with everything else going in the world right now and suicide as high as it is, I would hate to find out that someone did something to themselves. I don't want to relive that all over again. I've, I've done that. And it's something that sticks with you. So in this mentorship, you're not just learning about trading. You're learning psychological coping skills, emotional coping skills. You're given the hard truth. And this is one that has absolutely no sugar on it, folks. Now, I've tried to talk like this in manners that hopefully wouldn't jar you, upset you, or think that I was lunatic fringe. <laughs> But if you have not been fully paying attention, perhaps you might want to start doing so. And by that, I mean, look outwardly and don't rely on anything that's going through the U.S. media because it is so one-sided. Get access to things that are going on in other countries and from people on the streets showing it to you, not Somebody that's trying to sell commercial time, but also keep a narrative going. It's all the other something different when you see it for what it is. And there's a lot of people doing it while they still can. But I believe that Telegram is going to be shut down. Because everybody's flocking to it. And they'll just turn it off. Now, will there be ways to get through it? I don't know, maybe on the dark web or something. I don't know. I've never been on the dark web. I wouldn't even know how to access it. But for the general John Q. public and, you know, everyday Nancy, they're not going to have a way of getting that information. And they're going to kill comms. The communication that we have right now, that's going to be interrupted. As soon as things start getting really upside down in the U.S. and people are in the streets going nuts, because that's what's coming, folks. It's going to drive the markets crazy. But it's also going to be a reason for them to say, that's it, comms, we got to turn them off. Social media, nope, can't have it. Not for everybody. The compliant will have a way to be able to prove that they are all in on this lockstep. I'm not locked up. I'm lock and load. So what are you going to do when maybe you can't access social media? What happens if the internet goes down for you? I've been thinking about that. How do I communicate to all of you? Obviously, I would be posting to my website, theinnercircletrader.com and to the forum if YouTube would still be accessible, I would be posting instructions through the community tab but nothing like what we're talking about here just instructions, go here, go there this is where I'm you know, making myself available if things get that extreme. I'm hoping it doesn't. I'm hoping that that's just a, a bad fear and just false evidence appearing as real. But I'm in such a preparation mode that I'm trying to have everything in place as a response. Okay, or a, a remedy as best as I can supply one if these types of things happen. And let's be honest. You, know, you and I may not have everything that overcomes whatever presents itself from all this crap. You know, and if I have a means to communicate, I will absolutely do that. 
But in case you didn't know, <laughs> Apple, Samsung, and Google have all joined in with their pledge to work towards developing a way to prove that people had their vaccination. So my question is, is why is that important? Are we not going to be able to talk on our cell phones and use texting or use social media because we are unvaccinated? Think about that. Because there's colleges right now that are saying online studies can't be taken by students that are unvaccinated. Think about the logic in that. That's asinine. That tells you this is not about sickness, illness, or your medical health, or other people's medical health. Like, just take a step back and look at all this stuff, and you'll see that it's not about what they're saying it is. It's control, it's demoralization, and if they demoralize people enough, they'll be blinded to anything they do in the future. And it's already working, like, phenomenally. Because a lot of these people are walking around thinking... People like myself that are unvaccinated are the walking dead. <laughs> the black plague. And to me, that doesn't make any sense. But I've obviously talked way more than you wanted me to. And I've talked more than I personally wanted to as well. But uh, this was the B-side of the discussions where I mentioned managing risk and understanding where we're at in this economic climate. Uh, this one obviously isn't going to be a feel-good, warm and fuzzy ICT video. But I don't want to keep making these types of videos, but the individuals that don't really get what I'm trying to say here, hopefully you got it in this one. You know, we're in for some hard, hard times. Hard times. Elevated risk, dangerous times, perilous times. There I say that. That's what we're looking at. Whether you've been vaccinated or not. Because if you got vaccinated, don't think for a moment that that spared you of anything. Because they're going to keep rolling out things. You need to get another one of this, another one of that. And what happens when you say enough is enough? Well, then you'll be just like us, the unvaccinated. You'll be shunned and said that you can't be a participant in the new economy. I don't want to be a participant in that new economy. Let's be honest. I don't care about the new economy. If I can't live my life and my family's life the way we see fit, which doesn't hurt anyone else, I don't want to be here in that stuff. So, does that mean isolation? You know, personal isolation? Eh, whatever. <laughs> I'm introverted. I, I, I've been made for this. But my family isn't. So... While I feel like I'm Superman and impervious to that aspect of it, my kryptonite is my family. Because they are not like me. They're social butterflies. They want to get out and mingle. They want to go out and have their functions with friends and family. I've always been reserved. And many times I don't go to functions. Or I don't go to family outings. Not because I don't love them. I just... Don't want to be around them. So I love them from a distance. And that creates problems in my household with my wife and my children because sometimes I don't want to do things. And they're not going to adjust to these types of things if it gets worse, which it certainly looks like it will. And I can tell you that having lots of money, lots of toys, big houses, all kinds of the things that everybody dreams about when you have a lot of money... That does not exonerate me from the stresses of being a father and a husband with family members that depend and rely on me. And we aren't going to be able to do the things that you think rich people are just going to walk out there and be able to do because they're, we're not. So I don't look at my wealth as an empowerment because I see what's going on. And it's going to be used if they're doing what I think is going to happen. They're going to use my wealth and people like me against me. So 
I can have all the money in the world if I can't purchase because I'm not part of that new economy. I might as well be broke or poor, right? And that's really what's going on. That one stings, doesn't it? My wife didn't understand that the first time I told her. Took a couple times explaining it to her. Because she sees we have lots of this and that. And she thinks, well, you know, we don't need to worry about this and that. No. <laughs> it won't work that way. If the banks won't hold my money, how can I pay? And I know some of you right now, oh, that's where Bitcoin comes in. Crypto comes in perfect for that. Just sit back and watch. Because that's going to be next. You don't think they have that already figured out? They're funneling everybody with means into crypto. Do you ever think about that? What you think is a saving last bastion in wealth preservation and creation. Yeah, I see that as a landmine field with a whole lot of landmines in it. And that thing can go down really fast. You've seen it. And I'm not here to try to scare you out of it. I could be absolutely wrong and you're probably laughing. Yeah, you are. Okay. Just be careful, folks. That's all I'm asking you to do is be sober-minded. Don't think about getting rich real quick. Okay? You've invested $2,000 to be here. Some of you less than if you started in 2016. $2,000 is not a lot of money. It's not. But you could lose a whole lot of money that you don't have if you don't listen. And you can't fix it once it happens. That's all I'm trying to prevent. That's it. So with that, I'm going to close. And I'm true to form. Every time I say it's going to be a short, brief video, <laughs> it always goes longer. So anyway... I will touch base with you tomorrow, obviously, for our weekend commentary. Uh, again, same things as last weekend. I will have it up by 8 p.m. tomorrow evening because uh, I have plans, and it will be all through the weekend, so I have to have it up by then. If I can get it up sooner, and I might try to do that, I might try to start using my 12 o'clock in the afternoon time window to start doing the videos because technically that's like the heart of London clothes. It can go to one o'clock with some moves, but I'm going to start using noon as my cutoff time so I can do my commentaries and have the videos done a little bit sooner. Not all the time. I'm going to try to strive to do that. I know some of you would like to send me emails and in the past it's been done. Hey, can you try to get the video done by this time? Cause I got this to do. <laughs> this doesn't have your way mentorship. I appreciate your enthusiasm, but it's not going to work like that. I have so many things I'm juggling I'm trying to get everything going and it's just, I'm a dad. I'm a husband. I have things I got to do for my own peace of mind too. And I'm operating other businesses, not just this. So it's a lot going on behind the scenes. So I'm trying to let you know if I'm making changes in how I do things, I'm verbalizing it, letting you know what I'm trying to do. It may not happen. It may be you don't get the video until 8 o'clock tomorrow. Okay, or something could happen and I may not be able to get the video up at all until late, late, late Sunday. You know, I need you to understand in these times, be flexible with me, folks. Okay, because I am not Superman. Okay, I'm not impervious to things. Things are changing at the back of an eyelash. It's just like, it's so... It's incredible right now. It's an amazing time to be alive with everything that's going on. But don't forget that I'm a human. <laughs> okay. I have, I have emotions. I have breaking points. I have patience that is limited. Very, very limited. Even though I probably sound like I have the patience of a saint sometimes, and I've been accused of that. Believe me when I tell you, I don't have that. 
I don't have it. And I care about all of you. Even the folks that quit. Okay, I care about all of you. Because if I didn't, I wouldn't pour this much into it. I'd just say, here, give me your money. Here's some videos. Good luck with that. I'm trying to teach you how to protect yourself from yourself and give yourself the only chance you're ever going to have if you listen and not undermine yourself. And if you don't fully have it together and you try to just take a shot at it right now, you'll end yourself. And no help from me, no rebooting, <laughs> no FTMO, somebody else's money will fix that. You'll be scarred and it'll hurt you and you'll have a toxic thinking process about the markets going forward. And that's impossible to be profitable like that. I know it doesn't seem possible. Like you think you can come back from anything right now. Try coming back from something where you owe a brokerage firm money in the degree that you don't even have. And then you got to file bankruptcy if that even can happen. It may change that in the future too, where you, there's no such thing as you being able to file bankruptcy and treat it like taxes and student loans for uh, education. You can't file bankruptcy on those things. They take it. <laughs> and I, I, there's so much more I want to say, but I don't think you're ready to hear the majority of it. And I don't want it to become a distraction from you learning here. So hopefully you got something from this one tonight up and to the point of where we talked about the consolidation midweek decline. Hopefully you can see what it is that I was presenting as a scenario for this week. And we see it delivering, but I'm not trying to pat myself on the back. Like I said, it's just one more evidence to knowing what you're learning here has truth and validity to it. And while you may not and I may not be firing on all, all cylinders and, and having it dialed in every swing, knowing what to do, you don't need to have that every day and you certainly shouldn't expect it right now. Not from me, not from yourself. It's a hard thing to do, giving yourself permission. But try to find a way to do that. And I promise you, it will make you stronger as an analyst. And as a stronger analyst, there's no other default but a better trader as a result. Until I talk to you tomorrow, be safe.